Hey, welcome back. In this final part of the guide, we're going to discuss 3D animation technologies for browser software and web development. 3D animation design and development on the web is a very broad topic involving a massive amount of technologies, tools, frameworks, and software. Some use cases for 3D applications that you might want to develop for the web are 3D video games, which can look just as good as video games that render in game platforms like PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, and etc. So you can have a video game that renders in the browser that looks just as good as all of those video games. Another usage example are interactive 3D environments. An example of that would be something like Google Earth or any type of application where you let a user navigate through a 3D scene or a 3D environment that has 3D models in it and allow them to interact with them. Another example would be virtual reality environments, which would be applications that work with virtual reality hardware. Another usage example would be 3D model viewing and building. It's possible to create software and applications that allow a user to build 3D models and 3D environments. Before we get into discussing a lot of other technologies, I want to take a moment to focus on WebGL and the HTML5 canvas. And WebGL is OpenGL ES for the web. And when you're working with WebGL on the canvas, you use the WebGL context. And some of you might already be used to the context for 2D graphics rendering and animation. And on my channel, I have a good crash course for the 2D context on the canvas. It's called the Canvas Bootcamp. And that's a playlist of videos that will get you familiar with the Canvas API for 2D graphics and animation. So if you want to learn all about the Canvas 2D context for animation and graphics, you can go through the Canvas Bootcamp playlist right here on my channel. And working with WebGL, the context is WebGL. And WebGL is fast becoming the most popular way to render 3D graphics because it comes native and stock in all modern browser software. And this is the URL that you can navigate to if you want to learn all the ins and outs of WebGL from the official website for WebGL, which houses all of the specifications, the manuals. And this is what that website looks like. So you can see down here you have WebGL 1 specifications, WebGL 2 specifications, and all other related information about WebGL. And this is the information, these specifications are what book authors and tutorial makers would use. They would reference these specifications and get the knowledge from those specifications to teach you with. So you don't have to buy a WebGL book uh, or any other third-party manuals or code references because this is the source that anybody who writes any code examples or references might use. So you might as well go straight to the source and bypass having to buy books or buy courses that might be expensive because the people who write those courses are just going to reference these specifications and take information from these specifications and then try to sell it to you. So you might as well just go to the free source before you might buy something that's expensive. And here are a list of WebGL frameworks that you can explore as you get time. And these frameworks would make development of 3D applications and animations a little bit easier than building them from scratch. They just help take some of the rocket science out of it. And 3.js is probably the most popular among them. But several of these in this list are very popular. Others are not so popular and not very widely used by a lot of different developers. Now here is a list of Web 3D formats and tools. These are tools and software for 3D animation development that you might find handy. And you can see that WebGL is listed among them. Now before we take a look at this list of game engines, I want to discuss proprietary plugins. And plugins are proprietary in nature and they're not native technologies that come stock in the browser software like WebGL does. Now I'm going to recommend to avoid developing using software that demands the user downloads a third-party plugin. 
And that's the main reason that the Flash player was killed off a few years ago. So I think it's best to rely on technologies that are native to the browser software. For instance, something that renders WebGL code. Now let's take a look at this list of game engines that you can explore on your own time. Now here we are at Wikipedia. Now these game engines are tools that are available for game designers to code and plan out a game quickly and easily without building one from the ground up. Whether they're 2D or 3D based, they offer tools to aid in asset creation and placement. So you can see you have the list of all the game engine names on the left here. Then they show you the primary programming language, then the scripting language associated with that software, whether it's cross-platform or not, it's 2D or 3D orientation, and the target platform, which is a very important column because you'll see that some will cater to more platforms than others. Basically, it's better to work with a tool that caters to more platforms than less. So. Actually, one that covers a lot is Unity. So let's go down here to Unity. Where is that? So if you develop in the Unity software, you can deploy for all of these different platforms. Windows, OS X, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, Android, Blackberry, blah, blah, blah. And WebGL is among those. Now let's quickly discuss animation performance. The animation performance is dependent on the user's computer hardware and software. A user with a more powerful GPU and CPU will experience a smoother performance than a user with weaker hardware. Not everyone will experience your animations exactly the same. Now this applies to both 2D and 3D animation rendering. The GPU is the graphics processing unit, their graphics card and the CPU is their central processing unit. Okay, within this video, you've been introduced to a lot of different tools and software. And if you were to try and learn all of the various tools and softwares and frameworks, it would take you several lifetimes to try and learn all of that. So my advice would be to choose certain software or tools that will help you get the job that you need done and master that tool instead of trying to master all of these different various tools. So choose something that's really popular because something popular is going to have a large developer base and there'll be a lot of examples online showing you how to do things within that software. And there'll be more tutorials for that software, a lot more script examples, etc. So now you should have a really good grasp of 2D animation on the web and a wide array of tools to explore and experiment with for creating 3D animations and applications for the web. Now with this video, I'm going to bring this series to a close and it's very possible that I might choose one of these specific tools and softwares or frameworks to create another playlist of videos for because each one of the tools that we discussed in this video would require a huge playlist of videos to train somebody how to use them. And for most developers, 3D animation would never even enter into their tool belt because most of the things that the ordinary or average web developer would do are 2D. Usually 2D animations, um, every developer, modern developer, no, needs to know how to do 2D animations, but not many would require knowledge of how to create 3D animations unless they were creating specific type of applications that require 3D animation. So I'll just wish you good luck with all of your 2D and 3D animation design and development projects and I hope you make something beautiful and make lots of money. Okay, bye bye.